Good morning, everyone. Let's give the Lord Jesus a hand clap of praise. We are about to start our Sunday school hour, and I'm going to ask you guys, we, Carmen, we got about 20 icebreakers, huh? We haven't, we haven't done icebreakers in a long time. But I need to get them out, and I want, I want, I want you to follow me today carefully about, um, about where we're going Sunday school. Now, remember, you can ask a question. You can make a comment at any time during the lesson. If the Lord uh, placed something on your heart to say or to, to do, please let me know. Please let me know. All right? Before we go any further, let's have a word of prayer. Let's all agree together in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we bless your name. And, Lord, we ask not our will, but your will be done. Come in and speak with your people, Lord. God, we thank you so much for who you are, for all that you do. Open the eyes to our hearts so that we might see and hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Carmen Baker, let's go with him. I want to break a little ice with you right here before we get into this, to this prayer. Because all we're going to do is one scripture verse. And that's where he said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Yeah, say what you mean and mean what you say. Yeah. My boy Denzel. Ladies, y'all can calm down now. Listen. <laughs> Here we go. Denzel said, nothing is free. No pain, no gain. No risk, no reward. No loyalty, no love. That's what I like more than anything. No trust, no friendship, no discipline, no result. No sacrifice, no opportunity. Is that, are those true statements? I totally 100% agree with them. But that thing about no loyalty, no love, that's the one. No discipline, no result. Sophie, I, I can't uh, email them to you if you want me to, by the way, also. All right. Just, just make sure you, um, I get your email address. All right. All right uh, uh, anyone else who wants my I'll email them to you. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one, Carmen. A mindset is what separates the best from the rest. Is that a true statement? Absolutely, guys, it is. H how you set your mind, if you set your mind Saturday on being on church on Sunday, you're probably going to make it. You know, I mean, probably, but, but if you say set. Sunday morning, I don't know, I got all these questions. But when you set your mind to do something, not that you can do any and everything, but you can have a lot better results when you do them the right way. Let's go, Carmen. And it's about renewing your mind. Now remember, all this stuff is, is about your mind. Things that want to know, there is a heaven and there is a hell. Well, Y'all can say amen in church sometimes. Yeah, there is a heaven and there is a hell. Everyone will either go to heaven or they'll go to hell. There's no middle ground. Both places will last for eternity. There's a guaranteed way to heaven, and his name is Jesus. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Amen. Let's go, Carter. What comes easy won't last, and what lasts won't come easy. Let me tell you something about that one. Yeah. Most of the things in this world, you got to work for them, baby. You got to put a little elbow grease with them. You got to put some sweat and some tears, and every now and then a little bit of blood into it. Y'all hear me? Yeah, you, you got to put something to it. Let your yes be yes. You know, you know that's what that's we're going. Because it, uh, James is going to say some people are going to fall into condemnation. And uh, I saw that thing. I lived that thing yesterday and last night. Let's go, Carmen Baker. When we water down the meaning of sin, believe this. We water down the sacrifice which was paid for that Calvary. You know, people make mistakes. They do. But let me tell you, sin is still sin. Sin is still sin. Let's go. Uh, hold on, Miss Clem. I just wanted to ask about the other one that said what comes easy, easy won't last. But uh, what about our salvation in Jesus Christ? I, it wasn't easy for him. But isn't it easy for us to well, accept him? It, it, well, it is and it isn't, Clem, because people accept him and they really don't mean what they say. They have an emotional feeling at the time. That's what we're doing. People accept him as Savior, but the problem is Lord. Uh, so I, I do believe, I mean, I, 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 because faith reaches up, and that, that's when you are the substance they hold for the evidence of things not seen. 
people see what they want to see and they feel they want to feel. But then when it's time for the rubber meets the road with your with your faith, that's when you fall, find people fall away. How, how bad is your want to to do what God would have you to do? People want that sweet feeling of Savior, but the problem comes in is with the Lordship. Yeah. That I don't. I, I want you to save my soul. I really don't want to follow what you tell me to do, and how you tell me to do it. Go ahead, sir. Hey, they, we don't want to surrender. We don't want to give up what we what we have. We don't want to sacrifice. We don't want to do that because it, we like what we want, and we want what we want, and we don't want to give it up. Well, you know, Bob, I'm, I'm in agreement with. It. I think that, but when, when when you realize you're the worst sinner you've ever met in your life. When, when you realize that, you ain't got to watch somebody hatchet somebody on TV and go and kill up a room full of folk. No, when you realize your sin just as bad as his sin, that's when you get to cooking with hot grease. But people say, oh, I'm not like him. I, I'm, I'm not doing what they're doing. You don't have to do all that stuff. But when you sin, you sin. And because people put these categories of little sins and big sins, no, when you sin, one sin, from your birth is good enough to send you to hell. So be very careful. Go ahead. You, you know, with that being said, too, when when people, I used to think that salvation was easy just to say yes. Just by saying yes to by me, it was easy, but it cost him his life. But in doing that, it makes me think about the part where you say you have to continually work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And then when we start thinking one way, because I know I can have a conversation with you and you'll say to me, well, Jerry, uh, think about what you're saying. What would Jesus say and how would Jesus say? If you got a problem, you don't have a me problem or a man problem. You got a Jesus problem because you aren't going with what the words say. So it takes you back to the word to see what part you're actually missing on and what you need to do to not have a Jesus problem. It's all right to have a man's problem, to me. It's all right to have a man problem or a woman problem, but I don't want a Jesus problem. Yeah, uh, but also think about this. In, in Matthew 7, Jesus himself addresses it. Why do you call me Lord, Lord? They say, well, well Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? People go to church and they fake the funk all the time. And they think what they're doing, they're fooling us, but they're not fooling him. They look like wheat, but all along they're tares. And God knows this. They do a lot of church work. They, they sing to some of the best songs. They, they lead some of the best prayers. But hey, are they really saved by the Lord Jesus? All these people are going to make their statements before him that didn't we do such and such in your name? And he's going to tell them, get away from me. I never knew you. Those who practice lawlessness. I want to go back and re read Matthew chapter 7. You'll see what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Salvation cost Jesus his life. Not accepting Jesus is going to cost you your soul. It's going to cost your soul. Why are you playing a game in church and trying to logically define uh, whether you accepted Christ or not? It's going to tell on you. And don't let hell be the difference maker that, that's going to tell on you. Because you pretended and played and did not accept him as Lord, or you accept him as Lord when you wanted him to be Lord, but not when he was Lord all the time. Yeah. That just goes like that. It, I mean, it, it's, it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. Go ahead, Miss Angela. You know, when you're saying that as far as, you know, what we're saying, that he paid the price on Calvary's cross and how we want to accept him as Savior, but not Lord. But it, when we, when you really think about it, you accept him as as Lord. That whatever that he's requiring us to do to follow him, is for our own good and our own benefit. Because there's nothing he will ever ask us to give up, that's not best for us or beneficial to us, and that's worth the sacrifice. So having him as Lord, get into a place of maturity where I'm willing to give up whatever it is I need to give up to truly have him as lordship of my life. You're right, Angela, but, but here's the problem. People go to church, they lead good lives, but they won't follow the dictates of the scriptures or, or the church. Now, God ordained the church 
after he ordained the family. So, you know, but, but that, uh, the, the, the numbers dictate that people go to church, they follow church when they're in church, but then they're going to still go out and do what they want to do and get a doctrine that God never told them to go out and get. And, 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 and Ron preached a sermon, 1 Kings 18, how long will you falter between two opinions? You cannot live on these two opinions, but people do it all the time. They, and that still doesn't make it right. And you try to tell them, look, you, you really shouldn't be doing what you're doing. Well, people are going to do what they want to do anyway. And there's no use of you stressing out about it and, and getting mad about it because they're going to do what they want to do. All you can do is tell them what thus says the Lord. Nothing more and nothing less. And pray that they don't falter between two opinions. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible makes that abundantly clear. With my boy of all people, Elijah, he charged the people that, how long? Are you going to falter? Huh? And uh, the word he, that, he, that he chooses was falter. Yeah. Because you're gonna, it's going to be a mess what you make out of yourself, trying to do everything or please everybody. But when you sit in authority of the church, you sit in authority of the church and the Lord Jesus, the fellowship. That's how it goes. Go ahead, Ms. Clare. I guess that was my question, uh, a couple of my guests, <clears throat> in trying to understand, um, is when uh, are we talking about if we are unsurrendered we just unsaved right correct so we're doing what we're doing you know we're going through church like we're going through church stuff but we're really not saved that i guess that was my thing if that we if we haven't accepted him as a lord does that mean we unsaved or is the lordship and this may be out there part of the process, you know, sanctification or whatever. Help me out with that. I, 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 I most gladly will help with that. Here's the deal. When you accept him as Savior, you can't separate the two. You cannot separate the Lordship from the, the, the Savior. But I think we as humans, logically, we try to do that. I think some people will never walk down this aisle and accept Jesus Christ publicly, even though he called everybody publicly. I think somebody sit right there in that seat and they can get saved. But the, you'll tell by the fruit that they bear as to whether or not they are who they say they are. My, my personal opinion, Ms. Clem, is this right here, is that people go to church. When Billy Graham, when I first started the pastor 21 years ago, the Lord, uh, Billy Graham said that 80% uh, of the church ain't saved. I just did not like that figure. But being a pastor now, I do believe four out of five people who go to church are not saved. That's just my personal opinion opinion. I cannot nor can you tell the difference between the wheat and the tares. Only God can. The tares look just like wheat. But when you accept him as Savior, I think logically we try to say, oh man, I got saved at church today. Well, that's just a part of it, baby. That's just you, it's like accepting Christ as, as, as uh, holy but not loving. And you, you, you accept both of them that, that, that there's a holiness part and there's a loving part. But I think people, mankind, try to put him in a category well I got saved and, and now I'm done I don't need to go back to church or I, don't, I can rob God I don't have to pay my tithe all that kind of stuff I think that's man's doing and only God knows whether or not they're really and truly saved go ahead Miss Casey yes sir I wanted to we ain't got to the word yet y'all <laughs> go ahead I wanted to make a comment when you said um, God is love He's loving and holy. And we oftentimes hear people say, oh, well, God is a forgiving God, and he's going to allow me to, to get into his heaven, and he's going to forgive me, and he's going to turn the other the cheek. and You know, all of these things, but we, we don't consider the totality of the scripture. Sin is sin. The only way we can be cleansed of our sin is by the bloodshed of Jesus Christ. We can't create our own doctrine, but my generation the younger generation believes so much that i can i can believe in jesus but i'm also burn sage in my house to get rid of these evil spirits well you, you can't do both you can't have the world and the word you have to make a decision i'm going to follow jesus christ as my lord and savior and that's it you know when, when you're right when, when you accept jesus as lord and as savior People that's on the dark side, they don't know they're on the dark side right. unless you confront it and tell them. 
So when you tell them now, their blood is off your hand. But if they choose to still do it, you know that Christ is not Lord. Now, what your prayer should be before you judge them is to pray that they get saved. I mean, pray they really get saved because they're still doing the things of the world, but they expect the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you can be around a whole lot of people who are blessed, and you can get the blessing. You can get the rain just like uh, the, the just and the unjust, just like everybody else. But be careful to live your creed and to live your word according to what God says is worth. You cannot have two opinions. You just can't have it. You, you, you got to decide that you're going to follow Jesus and follow him alone. Uh, uh, Desiree and Bob. Yes, sir. Well, I had a question as well, Pastor. I know I was talking with someone <clears throat> recently, and they were quoting a, a prominent pastor who recently passed. They said that hell is obscure, as if to say it's not real. And I know we here we teach that hell is real, and heaven is real, but we have to live a life to show that we are want we have accepted Christ in our life, so that we don't condemn ourselves, but we go to heaven. And so um, I was trying to speak to them and understand how they could have that doctrine. I just didn't understand where that came from. Well, I just I, I tell him his name was Carlton Pearson, mm -hmm. right? He just died of prostate cancer last week. But here's the deal: he was defrocked from the church. Because he said that God gave him a revelation that nobody's going to hell. Well, that's what he said. And the church told him, dude, if you preach that kind of stuff, you got to go. And the church kicked him out. He was a mega church pastor. Because saying like nobody's business. But when he made that revelation, the church had to let him go. It doesn't matter who you are. But it's the amazing part, this guy's dead and gone on. And people still adhering to that doctrine. Yeah, that, it, that's the saddest part about it. Is the, the, the demonic forces that uses you to say this stuff, then you say it, and it, it affects so many other people and collateral damage. That hell is obscure. Well, baby, we need to get in the word because Carlton came up with a doctrine that was not biblical. He said one night he was watching TV with children in Africa, starving children, and God gave him a revelation that everybody wasn't going to hell. That, that, no, I take that back, that there was no hell, right. that everybody was going to hell. Wow. That is antithetical to what the scripture says. You cannot do it your way. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. You know, the, the church that I got saved in had a, had a doctrine of, of you could lose your salvation, and uh, their, their definition of sanctification was it's a second work of grace. But as when I got into the scripture and looking at what the word says and talking about sanctification being set apart for for God's purpose and but I, as I've observed throughout the years do you think this is a quit then I go to a question of when a person gets saved they are saved but it's taking him from that savior learning and being nurtured to realizing and accepting him as Lord can be a process. It could be a quick process. It could be a slow process. But I do believe if they stick under the discipleship of the word and they, they learn of Jesus and sit at his feet, they're going to eventually recognize him as Lord. Would that be a true statement. I, I'm not going to say yes or I'm going to say no, but I would side more on no. And here's why. Because so many people come up and I believe that they believe that they're saved. I do. But again, only God knows whether or not they're saved. I, whatever the Holy Spirit does in a person's heart, he knows what just happened. I think so many people, they do. Sanctification, it is a process by which, and and you work out your own salvation. There are processes in there also. I do believe that God knows the heart. And, 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 and Jeremiah 17 says, the heart is deceitful it. and is right. desperately wicked. Who can know it? But I don't God. think we know the depths of, our, our, of what's going on in our heart. I think people go to church, people go to church all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think until they get to that point where, man, when the light really goes, goes off, off, to say that this is what's going on and this is what's happening, that's when the Holy Spirit, I think a lot of church folk go to church 
and I think they believe that they're saved, and I don't know their salvation state, and you don't either, but I think only God knows. But I do believe that's why the Lord says salvation is going to come, I mean, the judgment to come through the household of faith is going to come through the church first. I don't, I, Bob, I don't, I don't, I, if you ask me, I would say that God knows because if, if God planted the seed in your heart, seed in your heart, and he did something in your heart, the Holy Spirit is going to produce something in you. You don't have to produce it. He's going to do it. And then you'll work out your own soul in salvation, fear, and trembling. I don't know how God's process works. I do know that only he knows the heart of those that really profess him. I guess one of my, my statement was more they thought they were saved. And ju just as you said, they, they come to that, that light bulb goes, well, I'm not. You know, I, I need to make him not just Savior, but I need to make him Lord of my life. That's the only, that's the key. Yeah, yeah, uh, Surrendering. Yeah, you're right. And, and, and not necessarily make him, he's Lord already, folks right. that don't recognize but let me tell you something that 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 Elijah said. If ba if God is Lord, follow Him. But if Baal is Lord, you follow Him. But make a decision about what you're gonna do because you cannot straddle the fence. First Kings 18. If you, if you if my readers want to read, I'm just saying he tell them you better make a decision about what you're gonna do, and you cannot have it your way. You can't do it your way, and you can't have it your way. Young folk die, old folk die, people die. We're just here. If if this uh, if you got a one dollar bill, how about Ron? Let me get them one hundred dollar bills from Asia. Let me get them Asia. Get them. <laughs> if you, if you got a hundred dollar bill, right? Do you spend it or do you invest it? If you got a good life, do you spend your life or do you invest your life? You invest your life in the kingdom for God, because your life is not your own. It doesn't belong to you anymore. God should now go and invest yourself, every bit of you, in the kingdom and watch what God does. But people want to spend their life and do what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it. They want to live for this world, not realizing that they are at enmity. They are an enemy of God by doing your own thing. You can't spend your life and invest your life. You got to make a decision. Which one are you going to do? I choose to invest my life in it. I choose to say out loud, I invest my soul in the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to be willing to say that I invest my soul, not spend my life. But how many people are willing to invest their soul in the Lord Jesus? Either you invest it or you spend it. You did, you had it your way. Was that Frank Sinatra? I say, I did it my way. You can do it your way and you'll get your results. But if you do it God's way, you get his results. Let's, if I miss him, I go, go ahead, Miss Eden. I just, good morning. I just, I was over there with the kids, but I apologize for being late. I, um, the light, well, when you, when you were saying that about the light bulb goes off, in my situation, I was thinking, well, I got to hold on to every dime I got because I don't know what's coming next. I don't know what's coming next. Well, the light bulb went off one day when I was at work. And God said, this extra money goes into my kingdom. And I, I tell y'all, when God, he makes it short and sweet. With me, he makes it short and sweet. He said, whatever you make extra, it goes into my kingdom. And I was like, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. My point is, and I, I'm doing it. I thank God I, I will be obedient to the word of God because you, my point is, you know when God is telling you something. It's not like you got to guess, you got to figure it out, you got to wonder if. When God speaks, we know. And I think that is why we are without excuse. Because we know when God speaks. Amen, Miss Eva. And then, you know, uh, again, 1 Kings 19. That still, small voice. And right, he keeps it short and sweet. We go 1 Kings 18 to 1 Kings 19. God speaks in a still small voice. He ain't in a hurricane. He ain't in a storm. He ain't in a fire. He he's a whisper to you. No, I told you how to do it. I, and I guess what hurts me the most as a pastor is I try and invest my all in everything, and I still see people who they know better. They will not do what God tell them to do. 
they, 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 they straddle the fence with the church and with, the, with their family or with the church and with home, and they don't realize the enormity of the mistake that they're making. They really don't realize how big of a mistake they're making because they want to give the Lord 80%. Now, people, you have to invest your life in what God tells you to do. That's why so many people can't be a spokesperson for the Lord. Elijah said, look, either you, if the Lord is God, follow him. Or if Baal is God, you follow him. But make a decision. Don't keep misleading people. Carter Pilsen, dead and gone. And, De and Desiree talking about what he told somebody else. That's all I'm saying. See how that misleading. And this person sounds like they may buy into that lie about that more so than in the word of God. Let's go, Carmen. I, I, uh, uh, two signs, same message. Is that right? Yes, sir, baby. Same, two signs. <laughs> same message. It's what, uh, Jesus kind of arrogant. He got a bully pulpit. Well, you can say what you want to. Same with one way. The narrow way is one way. That's the Lord Jesus. All roads don't lead to God. Only one, and that's the Lord Jesus. Let's go to the next one. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Choose discipline because it weighs a few ounces. Yet regret weighs tons because it accumulates discipline versus remorse. Buyer's remorse that you did something. Man, I had that last night. Just last night. I did. Clem, you know, because I invest in a lot. That's why this investment thing means like me. I invest in a lot of people. And then you help them, and they forget where they came from or forget what happened. And all you have to do is give God the praise. And they, they forget. They get on their high horse, and they forget. And I'm saying, Lord, I'm not going to do it again. Y'all hear me? Then he sends me to Romans 12, saying, Now, I gave you the gift. You don't get to determine that stuff. Whether they accept it or not, he said, well, he give you the gift of giving. You use it liberally. Like water running out. Just, just you give it. Just like God said. And you go back and you, you thank God. And you know, he asked me this morning in our daily bread. I mean, it's just crazy. Because when, when, when it hit me yesterday, the sin, the, 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 the pain, it settled in my back, Ron, that I couldn't move. I'm laying across the bed. Honestly, listen. But I read the daily bread this morning. Man, I'm ready to turn flips right now because the Lord released that mess that had my back. It was anger. It was sin. It was, you know, I'm, I'm tired of helping folks, Lord. And the very people I try and help give me their root opportunity kids. So I was in a place. The Lord let me sit on with a bad back all night and woke me up this morning and said, I got a word for you, brother. And when you read what he says in there, it just makes all the sense. David gave thanks. He, he, all he did, he, David gave thanks for everything God gave him because David couldn't build a temple. But he gave thanks to the Lord. Look, I thank you that I, I can, my son can build the temple. That he can do it. See, you know, I, I guess what was giving me, you know, the people that you help the most, you know, are, are you looking for a thank you? Maybe. Do you want to thank you? Absolutely. But are they going to give it? Most are not. Will they repay it or retry and pay it forward? Most are not. They'll take what they're going to take and do what they want to do. I had a girl lose a $10,000 scholarship this week, all behind anger. Yeah, behind anger. And miss, you miss out on the blessing because of misunderstood, misplaced anger. And you think you heard me? Baby, if you know how you hurt yourself, you wouldn't even do it. And, and one day we'll get a chance to talk about it and look back and see how you and folk around you, the wrong people you listen to, how they ruin your life. Just what Desiree was just talking about, how people can give erroneous information is full of, full of errors. And cop an attitude. Y'all hear me? They're cop an attitude. They never want to discuss Matthew 18, 15. If you got a problem with somebody, take it to them. Oh, no, I'd just rather quit the church than go and tell a lie about somebody behind their back. Now, bring it out so we can get every side out. 
No, I'd rather quit and talk about them than to go and confront the issue. When they go, let them go. Let them go. The stuff they miss out on is, is so, and, and that's, it hurts me because everybody want to give because th that's why I said let you yes be yes, you know be no. You made a decision to help this one person. Everybody did. And they missed it because they wouldn't live Matthew 18, 15. If you really got a problem with somebody in the church as a believer, you don't quit and do this stuff. You go and you confront the issue right there. And if that don't work with it, take two witnesses with you. Now remember, how long must you fall between two opinions? Your feelings and your flesh are the word of God. As for me and my house, better make somebody better make a determination. We're gonna serve the Lord. Let's go, Carmen. Now look at your brain. Which one? <laughs> Which one is your brain? Sometimes to learn, you need to unlearn. Let go of some stuff that don't even need. That's my problem here today. Why does my name come out of your mouth and y'all don't even count to me? Y'all not even on my radar, but for some reason want to attack my name. My wife reminded me last night, well, you must be doing something right. Yeah, you must be doing something right in order for that attack to come. And I said, Lord, I'm so sorry I let you down because I bought the lie of what I've been saying. You know, when you help people, you don't want anything back in return. But you know what I think? In our heart and our flesh, we do want somebody to say thank you. you know, or live your creed. You know, just if you do this and I'll do that. If you do, I, do that. I think the greatest tragedy of 2023 to me is to see a, a scholarship of $10,700 go to St. Jude as opposed to a person. Right, it just crushes me, man. It, it crushes me that people see a lot more than you think they see. And they know a lot more than you know. But because you make these fleshly, worldly, emotional decisions, you ruin your own life. Let's go, Carmen. Miss Clem. Pastor, I, I was sitting here thinking about that same thing because I had a conversation with someone yesterday who had um, severed or the relationship was damaged because they had an issue. The person was trying to extend the olive branch and gave the person a gift. And the person never said, thank you. And so they then just didn't have anything else to say to that individual. Well, when the Lord directed redirected them. This went on for a long time, months. And they went to the person as they, well, they should have if they really had a problem. They found out the person never received the gift in the first place because they left it with someone and say, give it to them. And it never happened. And I think that one of the things that we learn, I, I try, honestly, if I give somebody something, I try to forget about it. And I pray that I, I try to remember myself to say thank you, to be grateful. But I, tr I, I do it, and I, I was trying to find the scripture that says, you know, how God gives to us without repentance or whatever. I, when I give it, I really have learned that if they don't say thank you, I've already forgotten about it, or I'm not looking for a thank you. And I tell you one more thing, why? Because I, I think I learned that I was getting some kind of warm and fuzzy from the gift that when they come back and say, oh, you know, you really helped me. Oh, you changed my life, all of this. Then I'm like, I'm just grinning like I've really, really done something. And I think the Lord shut that off for me and said, no, you're not. You know, I did it through you in the first place. And so if they don't come back, nine of them didn't come back to Jesus. You then but right. one come you back, right. who am I? 
you, you are, know, you. but I'll, I'll say this and this will be it. I never missed a dime. I never missed any time that I gave to somebody because the Lord said it. He blessed me. He has, uh, I mean, it, it has just been miraculous. I, I had a choice. I could be all messed up because they didn't say thank you. Or I could be walking in uh, the power and authority and blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Ms. Clem, I'm, I'm in total agreement with you. Also, I think this, but before you clap too fast, now let me tell you this. No, no, let me tell you this right here. The scripture tell us don't cast your pearl to the swine either. Because, I mean, here, here, here's, here's where I am in Matthew 7. Because when you cast your pearl to the swine, and the swine take what you, this a pearl, and it wasn't a uh, ham hop, then they come back and they attack you. That's what Jesus warning to them is say, be careful who you give the gift to because this gift is above their head. You, you, you try to help people, uh, 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 when I, when I, my wife and I, when we buy houses, this lady, the realtor went me by one of my houses, she said, um, back in the 90s, the government was giving people houses. They would, they would like get, and people didn't know, they, they would give it to them like on a zero, then they had to pay X amount a month. What the people didn't, couldn't comprehend, that it was a gift, and they walked away from houses that they didn't, I mean, all they had to do was pay the mortgage on it for X amount of time, but because they didn't work for it, they did not appreciate the fact of what was going, and the government shut it down at four years. And here's my point, because you can give some people some things, and they're not really ready to use it in the proper sense of what you gave them. You can give people some, some people something, and they're not ready to process what you just gave them. And I think with me and Clint, what, what, what was in my soul last night was regret that I helped some people because Fuzzy Wuzzy wouldn't have helped them, but Pastor Ken did. So I'm faltering between two opinions. I am. Because I'm saying, I really would, the man and me, I never would have helped you in the first place anyway. You know, but the Lord say, do it, and you do it. I'm saying, Lord, they, just like Mr. Jonah, they doing it again. If you, if you correct them, they're going to get say, I'm saying, First of all, you're right. Everything is filtered through us. But then you say, as a pastor, Lord, am I, am I just giving away all the goodness that you've given me with, with people who don't appreciate it or won't appreciate it? Yeah, I just, and Clem, you know, it's a, it's a war, it's a battle, because as a pastor, when people can't get through or they come with emergency situations or they bring the kids before me, before I even deal with the parents who are going through things, I see the child. And, uh, and that's what gets me every time. And I'm saying, Lord, I can't do this. And, and, and it's the right thing, but then the parents use me, and they got me again, and this is happening over 20 years span. Amen. All because you're trying to help the children. You hear me? And it does, it does it, as a person who got the gift of giving liberally, it bothers you that you keep trying to help people, and then they come back and do what they do to you. But again, all the stuff came from God. He told you to do it. He told you. Yeah, he did. It, it, it is, Clem, but I'm telling you, when you give so much, it, it can be painful because some people don't know how to just appreciate a gift. They just don't. Go ahead, Jerry. You, you know, with that being said, too, because I'm like, Clem, Cl like and unlike, at one time, I, I did want to thank you, not because I went and spent money. That wasn't an issue because that was my choice to spend. But when you do things, thank you is nice. But even if you don't say thank you, let there be some gratitude in there somewhere. That is the thing because it's not that I have to do it. Even if the Lord gave me these gifts, gift or gifts, and I've gone that extra mile somewhere in there, there should be some gratitude, if not towards the giver than somebody else. It's not about being entitled because if I'm dead and gone, are they still gonna be doing the same thing? Reverend Ron asked a question in Bible study one night about when did you know that, and I'm paraphrasing, I might misquote, when did you know that you were committed to doing what the Lord say do? Because when you say, you are a giver, I'm a giver. Sometimes the Lord speaks to you and he doesn't speak to me. 
And I'm going like, hold up, we throwing our pearls to the swine. We continue to do it. But the Lord says, you're the head of the household, so I have to go with what you say. But somewhere in there, eventually, we have to stop. According to According you. According to me. According to you. Right. Listen, here's what I'm saying. What I'm not talking that, about our personally. No, I'm just no, no, I, I got you, but I'm saying in Romans 12, he addresses, the Paul addressed the issue, that when God gives you the gift of giving, he says you give it liberally. And James, how does God give? James chapter 1, how does God give? Liberally. How many people are sitting upon the grace right now and shouldn't even be alive today? This room should be empty with cricket sounds in here. Everybody here deserve a devil's hell, but but God. All but the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, grace go to the very people, Geraldine and Clem and MacMillan, who don't even deserve it. Yeah, cause, see, because God, it affects us, but God said, I'm trying to get them saved. And they're taking what you're giving to them that you don't work hard to get, and you're trying to help them, and God said, all I'm trying to do is save them. And, and you know, we, we miss that point because we, we kind of absor self-absorbed, whatever it is we are, because that's where I was. Go ahead, Miss Sophia. It sounds my ears are hearing that even though you extended your time and your resources and, and the word, it still sounds that you're angry. Oh. And, and oh. my thing is, it's for me, and, and, and I'm sorry, I don't have, have I, I don't wanna come, I don't wanna come off carnal or anything like that, but I know that the Lord gives us all discernment. And even though it may seem in our eyes that this is a situation that needs to be handled by me, whether they're bringing the kids or whether they're bringing, you know, the three-legged dog or, or, or whatever it may be, at some point discernment has to kick in because you've seen it before and you've seen it play out before. It may not be with that person, but you've seen it play out before. So where, where, where just in general, me, anybody else, where is no, because I, my sister is, is a giver. She's a giver, she's a giver, she's a giver. And through the years, you know, she, she's, she's taught me, you know, you, you need to, if, if you say who you are, through the Lord says who you are, you need to start showing it. Every, you know, stop being so tight, you know, about everything. Stop being so, so quick to say no. But in, in her giving, I see the same thing. It always comes back to, oh, I can do this over here. I didn't have money for here, but I had money to do over here. And I had money to go by here. And I had money to do this. But now that, oh, man, uh, my gas need to be paid or, or so and so. But you, you just went and, and you paid your, your daughter's car note. What, that was your money. So my thing of it is, <laughs> this is me. I'm Lord, help me, help me, because I, I'm. Mm. If the if if the same words and the same play continues to happen, I'm turning the TV off. I'm not watching the play no more. You can't come to me. It's a repeat. <laughs> Here's what I'm so feeling. Here's what gets me every time. I can have the conversation with the adult, but with my heart, God shows me the child. He used to tell the mother where well, the baby needs to be changed because he's soiled. And uh, she doesn't care about that. The soil. So I see the soil. I hear what she said. I see the soil, baby. And, and you know, so feel you're right with discernment. But I'd rather discern on the point of righteousness than unrighteousness. I asked, I'll do it probably till the good Lord bring me home if the child is front and center. My motivation is always going to lean towards the child. And that's how I get burned a lot because, but parents know that, that if they take the child to the church and church see the child, they're probably going to give into it. 
I do want to say no when the Lord tells me no. But I, it's hard for me as being a husband and being a father and a giver to see a baby in need who didn't ask to come here. And oftentimes, Sophia, you know, a lot of the children come back and they'll say thank you. Or uh, you, you see the productive lives they're living because you didn't give up on the child because of the parent. And, and I, I just say this right here. I, I think you bring a valid, absolute point that, you know, you have to have discernment and it is okay to say no. But if the Holy Spirit convicts you to go back, go back and, and get that thing right. But I'm talking about with me, I'm just telling you with me, but everybody don't have the, the gift of giving liberally. But if you got the gift, God's expectation, because I'm, I'm with you and I'm with uh, Clem. God gives me a lot more than what I give anyway. I think what gets me is the using and the takers of this, the users and the takers of this world. That's what gets me is that, and I, I know you're doing it, but I'm, I'm wrestling with God, but he says, still do it for the child. Still do it. You may not see the child. You may wrestle with it, but somewhere here, I, I'd rather err on the side of caution than not, that I really desire to do the right thing. And, you know, Sophia, I, I think that's what balance comes out, love and holiness. That's what, I mean, because you, you got to know it's okay to say no. But just make sure the Holy Spirit won't tell you to say no. And it's just not you arbitrarily saying no. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. I was similar to Miss Sophia, like, where's the no? Uh, I, I, I heard you uh, in b both parts defended with the gospel. I mean, defend it with the word by saying, you know, the Lord said give liberally. But then on the other if hand. If you have the gift. Yes, sir. Some people will give because I ask them pastorally to give. Yeah. But Jared, I have the gift to give liberally. Yes, sir. To give a lot more than most people can give a little love. It makes sense to you. Yes. Yes, yes sir. sir. And then on the other side, you say, but don't cash your pearls to the swine. Correct. And but in this situation, they were talking about you saying like it, it hurts it hurts you and I, I guess I'm I'm trying to see it at what point is is it just a part of your ministry or a part of what God is doing with you to make that sacrifice you allow it to hurt you let me differentiate between what everybody's saying it hurts me that the person I help come back and attack me or attack my name. That's the one that cast your pearl to the swine. Jerry and I are still going to give liberally. But it's like when you, you don't have a, a problem, then all of a sudden a problem just bum rest on you. And those are the very people you help the most. Why are you demonizing my name? And I, I help you more than anybody. And you're the one who's attacking me. And the attack, it hurts. And it settles me back. And, and, and being a man, a 60-year-old man, I want to strike back. But the Christ is greater in me to say I'm going to say what I got to say and leave it alone. I shouldn't have to prove my point by having to call up a witness. No. That's why he said let you yes be yes and you no know, be no. But it angers you that all of a sudden, out of the blue, you know, you know what this, uh, this term out of the blue, where it comes from? When lightning will strike from 20 miles away just out of the blue sky, it just hits something. So when it's a lightning strike, blitzkrieg. When it comes, it's just, you, where did that come from? The Lord allowed it. You know? And, and I tell you, if I don't get, if it don't get stuck in my spirit and in my back last night, I don't get blessed this morning and can't teach this lesson. Y'all still don't hear me, though. So the Lord had to allow it to happen. Because I was so angry. Just where did this stuff come from? The pits of hell. And the Lord allowed it because you're going to teach this lesson about yes and no. And now it made it simpler to me to just say no, because I just blocked the number. Now, I know they can't reach me now, because they've been blocked. And this time, Sophia, I'm, that's no, and I'm not letting them back in. That's got it. It's just no. It'll, it'll, those people, it'll never happen again. I assure you by the third word of God, that one won't happen. It's no. Alexander the coppersmith. He did me much harm. May the Lord repay him for his works. I think. Who? 
Oh, go ahead, man. Speak the mic. Speak into the mic. I'm sorry. I want to piggyback off pretty much what Sophia was saying because um, I've always been a big giver myself, and I have been, you know, used so many times throughout the years with family members, with friends, and that is one of the things that I have been heavily praying about in the last few years for the Holy Spirit to give me discernment on who and when I should bless someone or give to someone because I do believe that you are giving to God when you're helping people, but you really should pray about it because I really believe the enemy uses people. You know, the enemy don't have any new tricks. He used the same thing over and over again, just like he used the same people. It was several years ago, I was fortunate enough to work in a church and this, it was a mega church here in Macon in my early 20s. And uh, you had people that would show up at that church because they knew the church were filled with nothing but doctors and lawyers and judges and stuff, and they knew they were big givers. So by me working in the accounting department, it's amazing how God put me in places where I can be with people. People come up to me and they'll tell me their whole life story and don't even know me. And I'm sitting there waiting to talk to one of the pastors and about a, a accounting problem, and this lady is sitting there, and she's one that had been coming back every so often to get money and she sits there and tell me how she's been duking these churches and people even out in the street she said i said to myself if i asked one person for one dollar and i stand here for an hour or so and a hundred people give me a dollar i got a hundred dollars and she just telling me about how she's scamming people i didn't know her because i had just <laughs> been going to church for a few months well they said every so many months she'll come my roof is leaking my kids need this and that and all of that and they would just pour out all of this money to her but by her sharing that with me i got a chance to have a meeting and share with them about how she bragged about how she done scammed so many people they cut her off they still did things for the kids but they did cut her off but she got so upset she did went and she like spread so many bad rumors about the church and about the people there and she really tried to tear them down. And that was the enemy. And he had slithered in, and he was using the hearts of people. You know, and they, in their mind, they were given to her because they thought they was given to the Lord. And I remember the pastor saying then, we're going to have to start praying about what we do. Because sometimes we're not blessing people. We're, we're just enabling them to do what they're going to do. So that's my thing i'm praying and i'm asking god i want my yes to be yes and my no to be no i don't want to be maybe because i don't want to do anything kimora gave a homeless person a dollar and she said did i do something wrong nana because um my my mom said he's probably going to go and drink it up or use it on drugs and i asked her then i said did you ask the lord should you have given it to them and she said i didn't and i said well that's what i'm trying to do i'm really trying to pray because i don't want to encourage someone to use it on alcohol and drugs because a lot of people say well I just gave it to them it's up to them what they do with it you know God said to give it to them no God is not going to tell you to give anybody any money to go use on alcohol and drugs so I just wanted to pick it back yeah, on let, her. Let, me, let me help you out with uh, something now I've been pastoring 21 years and I know folk at big churches little churches it's the little people because the doctors lawyers and judges they can afford to give somebody something but I'm talking about ch average churches like this right here who don't have that, the poorer people who are the ones who will still give out of their poverty, they're, they're more blessed when they do it. But I'm sometimes mad at the baby's in the water drowning. You don't have time to pray. You, know, you don't have time. You need to pray yesterday for whatever you're going to do today, Lord. Because when you come across an emergency situation, and that's how the thing hits you as an emergency situation, you'd have had to have had a prayer life then. Even if you made a mistake by giving, God knew that what how many folk been given stuff for one purpose and, and used it for something else? How many folk been given a gift and re-gifted that gift and gave it to somebody else? So for you just <laughs> Because, the, listen, I, I, I'm saying this. <laughs> right. right. I, I, I hear you. I'm just saying, be real careful about judging. Be real careful. I'm, I'm, people trust 
That's why more Christ got to be in your heart. Because if he's in there, you know, people, gonna, they're going to abuse you, kind of. They're going to abuse you. They're going to take what you're trying to give and do. They're going to take, they're going to, that's what happens. But somewhere in your life, you got to give an account before God. You got to give an account. You try to think that thing out or use that cliche, I'm going to pray about it. Because sometimes you need to pray before the day, before it happens. And make sure that you give what God tells you to give. And hey, that's, uh, again, we're going to, on the summation that God said, let your yes be yes, you know, be no. Because he closes out with this word called condemnation. And now from here, we're going to go in this place called prayer and praise. Because from there, you're going to know how to pray. For, and it's not ironic that we're talking about this, but that's where it goes next week, if the good Lord wills. It's going to go into prayer and praise. That's what it's going to be about, about doing just that Terrence M is evil. Yes, yeah, sir. I just had a quick question. Is it wrong for Christians to expect manners out of people? Because I know that yeah. with um, yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. Okay. Manners. You want people to have, have manners, manners but, but we live in a day and age where people are not raised and taught to have manners and uh, be respectful. You you want them to, but all you can do is raise one in your house. And the ones who you can influence, but the other ones, just got to tell them that don't, don't be like the world. Yes, ma'am. Pastor, I have, I have encountered a lot of situations where the parents take the money, they do what they want to do with it, the children go lacking. Well, my response to that, and, just, and I just honestly got this revelation while sitting here now, is that that child has to see someone cares. Because the situation with yesterday... Those kids had to see that somebody cared whether mom or dad neglected them or whatever and, and abused their, you know, the finances or the resources. The children still have to see that somebody cares and will step up and do what mom and dad should have done but didn't do. Miss Steve, I'm with you. The, the church, you know, it, it got so bad with, I don't know who's, who's talking about, 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 uh, people going around and, and their job was to just, just try and do that to churches. That the churches made an agreement that their benevolence for the month was going to be $100. It's just according to the church, or $500. And we're not going to go beyond that. Oftentimes in the pastor of that church, if they have to go past it, the pastor will make a decision, well, this is an exception to the rule. I, I'm saying this right here that just obey what God tells you to do. And all you can do is what you do. And, and people are going to take your kindness all the wrong way. That's just the nature of the beast. And, and the last thing I'll say about that, Eve, is that the, the gift, even though the parents are going to abuse it, it, it was all alone for the child anyway. What the child saw and what they heard could influence them for the rest of their life. So we still, we got to be careful to at least try and do what God will have us do. Somebody else? All right, Carmen, let's do one more, please. They can come on in, man. Uh, all right, here we go. Let me, let's go to this one. Vin Diesel said this. You see, don't you know, you see, you don't know the value of loyalty until you never understand the damage of betrayal. That's my point all day right there. That is, is when, when, you know, when you're so loyal and you're trying to help people and do stuff, and all they did was going to betray your trust. It was a lie from the beginning. They just needed what they needed at the moment to get to where they wanted to get to. And they were never intended on doing what they say they're going to do. They were never intent. They, they were never going to do what they said they were going to do. Let's give the Lord Jesus a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Hold on, Kingston. Hold, hold it right there. Hold it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you this morning. In the name of Jesus, thank you for a good, kind word, Lord, that we will let our yes be yes and our no be no. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and for all that you do. Come in right now to your service and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We got 15 minutes, people. Got, come on in.